Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, gonna be doing something a little bit different. Um, I have not done, I don't think I've done one of these in like eight years at this point, I think. Um, I'm gonna do a couple of concert reviews for you guys. Went to some concerts recently. Of course, I posted about them on here. Uh, but what the hell? We'll do a video. We'll do a review of them. But I don't think I have done a concert review. I think the only time I did it was when I saw Van Halen in 2015, I think. I know I, I might have did... It may not have been a review, but it, I might have done a video on it. I can't remember. It. I'd have to look back at the, uh, at the videos, but... Um, I think when I was reviewing all the Van Halen stuff, I think I did a video about when I went to see. I'm not. I want to say that I did. Maybe I didn't. I don't remember. Again, that was so long ago. I have to look at the 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 tapes, so to speak. But I'm going to be doing um, this for you today. I'm a little late on one of them, but as they say, better late than never, I suppose. But uh, before we jump into that, as always. If anyone would like to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series, cartoon, comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, rant streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. Um, again, if any of you are interested, go ahead, send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. Um, for those of you that have sent them in before, thank you. Uh, greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel, and you want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos, so it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you want to see me cover here on the channel, I keep making them, and at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So, thank you. But, yes, um, again, it, it's bothering me now. I'm like, did I do a video about it or not? I, I want to say that I did. I'm not going to waste people's time and, and try to find the video. I'll, I'll do that later on. Um, and then I'll probably forget to mention it in a stream or something, because that's how it always goes. But... The music stuff that I do on here, um, I used to do a lot more with that. I know we always talk music in live streams and, and what have you, which is nice. But I don't really do much and, unless it's like a collection update or what have you. I don't really do too, too, too much into the music anymore unless it's a paid request because I've had people... Uh, send in paid requests for me to do album reviews and stuff like that, which is fine. I have no, I have no problem doing that whatsoever. I love doing that type of stuff. But for me, unless we're talking about it on a stream or something, a lot of that stuff doesn't really go over that well. At least in, in my opinion and in, in my assertion, um, maybe it does, and I just don't realize it. But yeah, I don't really do unless it's something random or it's a paid request. I don't really do a whole lot of music-centric videos. Maybe I should do more of that. I don't know. Anyway. But I figured, um, since I attended two concerts recently, and I did the meet and greet for both of them, so it kind of ties in with me going to conventions and stuff like that, too. Might as well talk about this. So first up, first concert that I'm going to talk about. Again, I'm a little late to the party because it was a week ago already. But I saw Brother Kane. Brother Kane is a band that I absolutely love. It's a band that I get really geeky about. <laughs> we all have bands like that. We all have movies. We all have video games, what have you. We all have something, or multiple things in my case, that we all get really geeky about. Brother Kane is one of them. Um... I've always been a big fan of their music ever since I discovered them from, you guessed it, Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers is the first time that I had heard of their music. 
and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute here, but ever since then, I was hooked, and I was a fan. I went out and tried to find all their music and, and learn as much as I could about them, and uh, Damon Johnson, who is the singer and one of the guitar players, uh, very quickly became one of my favorite journeyman musicians. And I know what people are thinking, well, what do you mean by journeyman? Um, basically, a journeyman is a guy that has a great career, but he doesn't really get that credit or that recognition um, that he deserves. And he or she moves into different areas and does different things and work with different people and is kind of like the guy but doesn't really get, or the woman, again, because there's plenty of women, especially in music, that have been in that position. Um, but they don't really get the credit that they deserve. And Damon Johnson is one of those people. Uh, Brother Kane was his first success, really, in the music industry, was his first big band. From there, he went on to play with Alice Cooper for many years. He was in Thin Lizzy when they were still using the Thin Lizzy name. And then when they kind of retired that name, they did a band called Black Star Riders. He was in that band for a little bit. Uh, actually, at the next concert, they were playing some of their music in between the sets, which was cool. Um, he, let's see, what else? He's currently in Leonard Skinner. Um, he took over that spot when, um, oh shit, his name is on the tip of my tongue. The, he, Gary, Gary Washington, who was the last original guy. When he stepped away because of his health, Damon stepped in, and he's been playing in Leonard Skinner the past couple years. Uh, he wrote the song Just Feel Better by Santana, which is, and that Santana did with Steven Tyler, which is a great song in my opinion. So he's kind of been there and done that. And because of Brother Came, he became one of my favorite musicians. Now, the band was active in the 90s. In 1998, after their third album came out, they broke up because it just wasn't working anymore. Um, you know, they broke up and went their separate ways. And they've done, I think in 2000... I want to say 2011, 2012, somewhere in there, they did some shows. And then I think in 2015, they did some shows. But they haven't been around for almost 10 years. Um, so Damon put the band back together, uh, a version of the band. It's, it is two of the original members right now. It's Damon Johnson on vocals and guitar and Glenn Maxey, who was the original bass player. He only played on the first album, but it is two of the original members, which is awesome. And they are, they did some shows, some like spot shows last year. I think the closest that they came to here was either Maine or New Hampshire, so I didn't, I wasn't going to make that that journey. Uh, but they're doing a lot more shows this year, so they're kind of spread out a little bit more, which is nice. And I just had to go again. This is a band that I love. This is a band that I cherish, and had to go. You know, there's no other explanation for it. They did put out two new songs, which we'll we'll cover in a minute here. Which I really like. I really enjoyed both of the songs. They're out on all your digital music uh, platforms. Or you could be like us cool kids and get it on vinyl. <laughs> um, which is the only physical release right now that they have of it. There's no CD. But it is on vinyl. Uh, shameless plug for Brother Kane. You can go on their website and order it. <laughs> um and their, their first album just got reissued on vinyl, CD, and cassette. So if that if that tickles your fancy to get it on cassette, because for some reason cassette's cool again, um, you can get it on cassette now if you want. <laughs> so they did reissue that original first album, which is awesome. I do not have that yet. I want to get the, uh, if you go on their website, you can get this really cool, like, orange-purple, like, splatter mesh type of color thing which is awesome but yeah so anyway let's get to the concert but this is a band that i love absolutely um the the concert was about an hour from here at a venue that i have never gone to but i have heard of it's called mickey's black box in Lidditz, pennsylvania which is near lancaster um 
I was going to go see Dead Daisies there earlier this year, but it just didn't work out. Uh, John Five, now in that band called Motley Crue, will be playing there, I think, in February with his solo band. So I will definitely try to go see that because I really like the venue. I don't know what it was before it was a, a, a venue, but it's 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 pretty nice. It's pretty small, but it it's it's nice in there. So they have the floor, like you could stand on the floor, or you could sit up in the balcony, and then they have bar stools on the side where you could sit. So there's plenty of places to sit. The tickets are all kind of reasonably priced. Um, yeah, it's a bar. It's basically a huge bar, but I don't drink, so that's not for me. But it was a really nice venue, and um, I did the meet and greet. I wanted to do the meet and greet because I figured, what the fuck, why not? I was the only one that did the meet and greet. I was kind of shocked by that, and I put all the pictures up. But uh, anyway, went back, uh, met the band. They all came in. Um, the other guitar player in the band is Tony Higby. And the drummer is Jared Pope. I saw them earlier this year because they play in uh, Tom Kiefer's band from Cinderella. They were the first guys to come in, shook their hands, said, hey, good to see you guys again. And they say, uh, I said, I saw you with, with Tom Kiefer earlier. They said, oh, cool, great, thanks for coming out and appreciate it. And what, where was the venue? And I said it was at the Santander Performing Arts Center in Reading, Pennsylvania, which is not far from here. They go, oh, they told us that place was haunted. I said, it is. <laughs> it was cool. And then Glenn and Damon walked in. Damon walked right in, just stuck his hand out. I said, sir, I said, I've been waiting 20 years for this day. And he had this big smile on his face. And I said, uh, yeah, I've been waiting a, a very long time for this day. And he goes, well, we're here. Thank you. He goes, uh, he asked where I was from. I said, Baltimore. He goes, Clutch is from Baltimore. I said, yes. I said, I just saw a picture of you and them on, on your social media. He goes, yeah. He goes, they're a great band. He goes, we, uh, we, uh, or I, I toured with them with my other band because he has his own band called Damon Johnson and the Get Ready, which is cool. He goes, yeah, I toured uh, with them before, right before COVID hit. We did their, they did like a Christmas run and we opened for them. He goes, they're a great band. They're all great guys. I was like, cool. Very cool. And yes, I do like Clutch quite a bit as well. Yes, they're from Baltimore, so I have a little bit of a soft spot. But, um, you know, he uh, Damon asked me, he goes, so did you get to see Brother Kane back in the day? I said, unfortunately, no. I said I was too young um, when you guys broke or were around. I said I was alive, but I was just, I was little. I was a baby and... When, the, when you guys broke up, I was only five, so I wasn't exactly going to concerts. I said, but uh, I was introduced to your music from the Halloween movie, and I was just wondering how that happened. How did, how did that come together? He goes, oh, wow. He said, well, he's, it, was, it was really simple, actually. He said, back in the day, the movie studios and the, records, the record companies... And he said, back then, the record companies were a lot bigger. It's not like it is now, where it's mostly smaller labels. He goes, back then, it was only a couple of labels. He said, basically, they kind of work in conjunction. Um, he said, the record labels would put out music to the movie studios, like, hey, here's this band that we sign, you know. And the movie studios would do the same thing. Hey, we're looking for this type of music um, for this movie. Like, we're making Halloween and we want this kind of music. And he said, that's really what happened. He goes, they kind of put out like a feeler for Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. Like, this is what we're looking for. And they just happened to choose Brother Kane for for that, you know, that feel. And he said, it was, it was great. He said, that was really cool. He said, the songs that they picked uh, really fit the movie. He goes, a lot of the scenes that the songs are in really fit the film. Now, the, the only shitty thing is their music is only in the theatrical cut. It's not in the producer's cut. So I think that decision was made after they decided, all right, fuck this one. We're going to redo this whole movie, basically. Um, I even, like, I have the work print. I think even in the work print, it's up here. 
I think even in the work print, their music isn't in there. So that decision was probably made much later on. Um, and he said, I, you know, I saw that in the theater opening weekend. He goes, I have like this huge poster of it at home. And he goes, it, it was really cool. He said, that was a really cool experience to, to get our music, Brother Kane's music in that movie and to see it on the big screen. Um, and I said, you know, and fool shine on. I said that, that song, you know, as soon as I heard that opening riff, that was it. I was hooked ever since. And, and here we are. So I said, ever since that moment, I just, I wanted to learn everything about you guys. I got, I went out and, and I didn't tell them this, but <laughs> I downloaded all their music because that's what people do. But I do have all the CDs, so you can't say that I, I didn't support the band. Um, and and that, that's what hooked me. He goes, wow. He goes, I've never heard that before. He goes, no one has ever told me that's how they discover Brother Kane. He goes, thank you so much for telling me that. I said, you're welcome. And I said, well, you know, again, with En Fu Shine On, it was that riff. And you hear, like, the rain stick. He goes, that was, he goes, that was improv. I said, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, the, uh they brought in a percussion player to play the congas in it and we were just recording the song and there was just happened to be a rain stick in the studio and he just grabbed it kind of just instinct instinctively and turned it to make the noise and we put it in and it was perfect so there you go i was like cool i said but that was not the only song in the movie he goes yeah and tony and jared obviously weren't in the band back in the day and he looked at them and goes yeah, there's a scene where like these high school kids are driving in the car and 2020 Faith comes on. They're like, whoa, we didn't even know. He goes, yeah. He goes, they use a couple songs. He goes, but it was, he goes, that was a really cool experience to uh, to to have our music in that movie. And N4 Shine On went to number one. That was their first number one hit. He goes, that was, that was a great experience. And I asked, I said, you know, what was it like touring with Aerosmith? Because they opened for Aerosmith on the Get a Grip tour. And he kind of looked at me and he goes, that, he goes, that was an out-of-body experience. And he looked at Glenn and he goes, Glenn was wearing the t-shirt the other day. And he goes, I was. I was like, cool. He goes, yeah, that was, he goes, that was nuts because we were all fans. He goes, if you listen to that first Brother Kane record, he goes, there's a lot of Aerosmith influences in there. And he goes, and for us to play those songs on tour with them was just a dream come true. I said, cool. And I said, there's also a lot of Allman Brothers on that first album. He goes, you're right. And I said, and Chuck Lavelle played all the keyboards. And he looked at me and goes, dude. He goes, you know your shit. I'm like, wow. I said, there's, I, I looked. I said, you know, you guys know more than me. I said, you have to work backwards. You have to learn from the people that came before you. I said, all these years of sitting here reading the liner notes and learning your influences, and they all of them were like, yeah, they're like, you get it, dude. I'm like, yeah, no. I said, today it's different. Now it's like TikTok, and that, that's not real. They all chuckled at that. Um, I did ask about what was, because they did, when Seeds came out, the second album, which had N Fool Shine on, I did ask what was it like touring with Van Halen, but I didn't get the answer. Um, cause they opened for Van Halen on that tour, on the balance tour for Van Halen, which was awesome. Um, I did ask, I said, do you plan on putting out seeds and wish pool on vinyl? He goes, yes. He goes, we're working on that next. I said, all right, cool. So there we go. Um, then we took pictures. I took, I got a shot with the band and I asked Damon, I said, is it okay if we could get one together? He goes, yeah, yeah, cool. I said, yeah. And you know, I said, you're one of my favorite musicians and I followed your whole career because you got to play with Alice Cooper and Thin Lizzy and Skinner. And he goes, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And he asked, he goes, um, is there anything we can, would you like us to sign? Oh, I forgot the guitar picks, my bad. I said, yeah, actually I grabbed your new single. And he goes, oh, they were all like, oh my God, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. I said, I can't stop listening to these songs. He goes, oh, man, that's great. I, th thank you. I'm like, yeah, they're great. I said, um, you know, not to uh, pry a little bit, but is there more? He goes, the plan right now, 
we would like we we're going to do more music and we're going to do more touring. He goes, time permitting. I said, yeah, because you're still in Leonard Skinner. Do you got dates? Yeah, yeah. He goes, you know, you know. He goes, yeah, but the he goes, we're we're having a lot of fun. We're loving what we're doing. Um, this is the right time to do this. It was the right time to bring this back out, Brother Kane back together, and we, we're going to do more music and we're going to do more shows. I said, sweet. So they all signed it. So they, and he asked, like, I I guess I don't realize it, but people, you know how it is. People go to these shows, they get autographs, they flip them on eBay. I don't do that. I never have. I never will. So I do find it odd whenever uh, someone and we'll, the other person will get to whenever somebody asks me would you like it personalized because i always think oh they're going to just do that anyway but no but they asked so they put fabio and then we got damon johnson uh glenn maxi again who plays on this and he was the original bass player and then we got tony higby and jared pope yeah and there's the back so um buck johnson who plays keyboards was not there. He is not on this run, but he does play. Um, I th yeah, that's yeah, that's Buck Johnson right there. I saw him last year with Joe Perry because I was hoping that he was going to be there because I wanted to ask about Aerosmith because he plays with Aerosmith. I just wanted to add, hey, is, is Steven Tyler okay? Like you know, we're 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 pulling for him, but I guess. Because of that, he can't go out on the road or something else. I, I didn't ask because I didn't want to get in trouble or anything like that. But, yeah, so we got Buck Johnson on the keys. Uh, there's Tony Higby. And he was wearing an Anthrax shirt because I was wearing a Ted Nugent shirt. And they were all like, oh, my God, that shirt's fucking awesome. Like, double live Gonzo. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, that album fucked us up. I'm like, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> but... And he was wearing an Anthrax shirt, which was really awesome. And then uh, there's Jared Pope, the drummer. There's Glenn Maxey, the original bass player. And, of course, Damon Johnson in the middle. And what's really cool about this is it is... you can Yeah, you can see it on the count. It's translucent. It's black translucent vinyl, which is cool. I have not spun this yet. I was waiting to do this video. Again, I know I'm a little late. And um, Marty Fredrickson, who, of course, wrote with Aerosmith and Brother Kane, who worked with them, I think, on all their albums, um, he produced this. He wrote the first song, Blinded by the Sun, with Damon, but he was the producer on this. And this is uh, Damon's label is called Double Dragon Records, which I love. Um, but this is this is really cool. I really enjoyed these songs. And then... They gave me a bunch of guitar picks, which is really cool. And then we got the the laminate, which is awesome. And then we'll cover the set list in a minute. So that was it. And I said, hey, you know, again, I've been waiting 20 years for this day. About 20 years, so to speak, since I've been a fan. And I said, break a leg out there. So, yeah, the then I went out and just watched the rest of the... I was a little disappointed because they are on this run out with Stone Horses. Stone Horses is from Baltimore. I was really hoping that they were there. For some reason, they were not on that show. It was a local band, which was pretty good. Um, I, I got I didn't get their CD because I didn't have any cash because it was cash only for them. Um, but yeah, and Brother Kane came out and they killed it. They kicked ass. I was sitting up in the balcony and then... When they started playing Hard Act to Follow, which I love that song, I went down in front of the stage. And Tony saw me. He kind of like kicked at me and was like, what's up, man? And and then um, he was messing with me because they everybody was clapping. And then he like kicked at me again. And he goes, oh, yeah, we were just hanging out backstage. Now you don't want to clap? So he was, just, he was just busting my balls, which I loved. And then when... They started playing "End Fool Shine On." Damon hit that riff, that down, 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 and he looked. He saw me walk up because he gave me a little wave, and he looked and he went down, 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 and he went, "That's for you." I'm like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like I felt like a kid again. It was crazy. And then Tony was like, "Yeah, man, this is for you." I'm like, "Oh my god, this is so fucking cool." Um, 
But yeah, so I, I was sitting there thinking that how this kind of came into play. I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, I was sitting up in the balcony, and it's the sound mix was really good. The, the acoustics and everything in there is really good. When I got to the stage, not so much because um, I was further up, but I'm thinking, not to be selfish, but if I go down, because there wasn't a lot, there was not a lot of people there. I was kind of shocked, but um, I'm thinking, if I go down there and I get up close to the stage, they're probably going to recognize me, they're probably going to see me, and they're probably going to give me a set list. Again, not to sound selfish, but that is what happened. So I went down, uh, caught the, really, the the songs I really wanted to hear the most, honestly. Um, Hard Act to Follow, which I really love, and Full Shine On, 2020 Faith, which again was also in Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, Machete, which might be my favorite song on Wishpool, and then Got No Shame. Oh, and I told them that, I told Damon that too. I said, Wishpool was your guy's best album. I don't care what anyone says. He goes, thank you. And he said that in, during the set. He goes, yeah, that, you know, that was just a, a dirty album. It was dirty rock and roll. I'm like, fuck yeah. And he goes, Seeds. He goes, we were really angry when we made that record. And you can hear, you can hear the grunge influence in there, which, eh, you guys know how I feel about the term grunge. And he and Damon was saying, he goes, we were trying to, at the time, we were trying to compete with Soundgarden and Stone Temple Pilots and Smashing Pumpkins and Pearl Jam. He didn't mention Nirvana because, well, anyway, um, you know, but it's like, so, you know, we, we had to compete with those guys. Um, their first tour, I didn't know they opened for Johnny Winter and Buddy Guy. Damon mentioned that. I was like, fuck yeah, that's awesome. Love those guys. Rest in peace, Johnny Winter. Um, and he did say, he goes, well, you know, kind of how one of the reasons why it ended was because radio changed. He goes, rock radio changed. And I said, it, and it wasn't for the better. And everybody kind of agreed with me. He goes, yeah, you know, it just, it wasn't for us anymore. It wasn't working anymore. And he said, I, I, other interviews and stuff I read, he said the label didn't care, which I believe. They were on Virgin Records, which was putting out like R&B and like hip hop and rap. And then Brother Kane was on there. So when they, in, in 93, when they first signed up, yeah, rock was still kind of big. And then towards the end, it wasn't anymore. So he goes, the label just didn't give a shit about us. He said they didn't give us any money to tour. He goes, in the Midwest, in the South, up here in the Rust Belt, as it's called. He goes, you couldn't you couldn't find our records in the store. He goes, they you couldn't couldn't buy them. They were gone. He goes, and that was awesome. And we go and we play, and people would show up, and it was a good time. He goes, you get out out west California, nobody gave a shit. He goes, but our core audience loved it. Our, our music was on the radio, but the, the label just didn't give a shit. So that, And it happens to every band for the most part. So there you go. Um, but yeah, I went up and I was able to get a set list because the guitar tech, when I went backstage, saw my Ted Nugent shirt. He goes, oh, that's fucking awesome. And he gave me a Ted Nugent pick. He goes, that's for you. I'm like, cool. And then I was just standing there, just kind of taking it all in, and he goes, Fabio, hold on. I said, all right. And he went and grabbed me a set list, which was really cool. But again, I've been going to concerts for 15 years, and I finally got a set list. I know I posted, some of you said, oh, that was a great set list. And it was, you know. <laughs> I'm so excited I had to sneeze. Um, excuse me. Because they played their hits, they played uh, "End Fool with Shine On." They played um, "Lie in the Bed I Make," which was another number one. "Got No Shame" was a hit. They played the two new songs. Um, they played some some deeper cuts, so to speak, which was nice. But and then the it's not written on here, but the encore was "The Boys Are Back in Town" because again, Damon Johnson played in Thin Lizzy, and it's "The Boys Are Back in Town." But it was a fantastic show. Uh, one of my favorite concerts that I've ever gone to, and the meet and greet was amazing. I did, they did put something on Facebook about the show, and I I put in the comments. I was like, "Hey, killer show!" and thanks for the meet and greet. They loved it, so I'm like, "Ah, they they remember." So, yeah. Um, hopefully, 
at some point next year, they will come back through. They will do another run of shows, and uh, I will be there. I will definitely be there. I will definitely be doing a meet and greet. Hopefully, we'll get some new new music at that point, too, and we will just go from there. But I am excited. Again, one of my favorite concerts, one of the best nights of my life. Cannot complain. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick pause. So I will do a short edit because I'm going to explode if I don't go to the bathroom. And then we'll come back. Well, you'll just see a cut. But I'll come back and then we'll talk about the other concert. So there we go. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I uh, went <coughs> and uh, changed out the disc to make. And then I had to go to the bathroom too. So there's that. Now, I did get <coughs> one more thing about Brother Kane. I did get a t-shirt and a hoodie, but they're upstairs. They're put away. It's just the the logo. It's nothing special. Um, but enough gushing about Brother Kane. So last night, because today is, today is Saturday. I keep thinking it's Sunday um, when I'm recording this. But I keep thinking it's Sunday for some reason. But last night, Friday night, I went to go see Ace Fraley. Of course, the original guitar player from KISS. Always one of my favorite guitar players. Um, one of the people that inspired me to attempt to play guitar. I am not good at guitar. Um, I don't know. Lately, I just go to these concerts and stuff. And I don't know what it is about this time of the year. I know this time of the year, everybody's getting into Christmas mode turkey mode, you know, that kind of thing. But it's just, I don't know, after Halloween, every year, every year, I just get into this mode where all I want to do is listen to music and buy records and go to concerts. Like, I don't know. It's just this time of the year. I don't know why. Anyway, but again, Ace has influenced me to pick up the guitar and play terribly. I've always been a big Kiss fan. Um, I hate what KISS has become for many different reasons, but we're not going to talk about that in this video. Um, but I've been wanting to see Ace for years. Um, he has come through this area so many times, um, whether it was just work or laziness or what have you, um, I just never went. So when I found out he was playing at in Reading, Pennsylvania, which is about an hour and a half from here, had to go. I love the venue. I've been to that venue. This is the fourth time I saw Ted. The first time I was there was last year. I saw Ted Nugent there. That was great. Um, and then this year I saw Tom Kiefer, John Karabi, and Winger, and then Extreme and Living Color. So I've been there twice already this year, and then I was there last night for Ace. But I saw Ace was coming. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I, I made the arrangements at work. I said, I'm going. And I'm doing the meet and greet. I was a little skeptical because I've heard a lot of different things about Ace over the years. Um, I heard it depends on what kind of mood he's in, whether you're going to get he's nice or he's standoffish or what have you. But for me, it was a good experience. And we'll cover that in a minute. So it was. I'm glad that I did it. It was worth the time. It was not cheap, but it was worth it. So I can finally say that I met him. Um, playing wise, I have heard some some recent things. People were saying, um, you know, he comes out and he's like stumbling around on stage, and people think, oh, he's drinking again. No, I, he's not drinking. He's seventy two years old. He's deaf, first of all. He, I think, he's like partially blind because all the makeup from Kiss like fucked his eyes up. I think. Um, and he's just getting older, which sucks, you know. And it, it is what it is. We're all going to get old, but he played great. Um, it was a great show, you know. I wish the only, and this is not just with Ace. The only thing, or one of the only thing, no, I shouldn't say that. One of the things. That's what I meant to say. One of the things that I wish a lot of these guys would do, whether it's Ace, uh, Joe Perry. Joe Perry does do this, but it's. People that come from these huge bands like Kiss, Aerosmith, and they go out on these solo tours, which I do love. I wish that they would play more 
of the solo stuff that they've done or the deeper cuts. Like with Ace, he has such a, a great catalog of solo material. I love all his solo records, whether it's that first Fraley's Comet record, which was awesome, Trouble Walking, which should have been his first solo record, to be honest. Um, the, the more recent stuff I really like, play more of that. Like, I want to hear Space Invader, which I love. I want to hear... Um, his cover of Fox on the Run that he did on Anomaly, which was great. Um, anything off of Trouble Walking, anything off of that first Fraley's Comet. Second Sighting is is okay. Um, that got more with the keyboards and the synthesizers, and it kind of got away from what I think it should have been, at least in my opinion. I, I do think that's people's kind of general consensus on that record. It's not a bad record, but they were getting away from what it should have been, at least in my opinion. Um, even the deeper cuts that Ace did in Kit, like he played Hard Times, which was cool. I'm like, all right, I can I can dig that, but like Torpedo Girl or She's So European or his cover of 2000 Man, I love his cover of that. I would, I'd love to hear that live. Um, Into the Void, which was the only song he did on Psycho Circus. Um, you know... There's plenty of stuff. Hell, I'll, I'll hear him do Dark Light from The Elder, which was the only song that he was allowed to sing on there. I just wish that, that people would do that. You know, Don't get me wrong, I love Kiss. They're one of my favorite bands, but if I never hear Detroit Rock City again, I think I'll be okay, except for the solo. Because, again, Ace played the solo on the, on the album, and it was cool to see him do that live. Um, they did Love Gun, which I have no problem with because Love Gun is my favorite Kiss song. But I just wish that, and he used to, like back in like the, the 90s and, you know, a couple of years ago, yeah, he played those deeper Kiss cuts that he sang and he played, you know, his own deeper stuff. So I just wish that more artists, when they go out on the road by themselves, would do that. Like Joe Perry, when I saw Joe Perry last year, he was great because he played, yeah, he played Walk This Way. Eh, you know, if I never hear it again, I'll be all right. He played, um, what else did he play? He didn't play Sweet Emotion. I don't, yeah, I don't think he played Sweet Emotion, but um, he played some more Aerosmith. So, like, he played My Fist Your Face, which I love that song. I'm like, okay, cool, that's a deep cut. That's what I want to hear. And then he played a lot of his uh, solo stuff, which I was like, okay, that's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear... You know, again, walk this way for the five millionth time. I'm good. I'll I'll go get in the car and leave early. That's just my only complaint about not my only complaint, but it's it's a complaint that I have with these with these guys that yes are from these huge legendary bands that we all love, but could you maybe play some of the deeper cuts? Could you maybe play some of the stuff that we're not gonna hear all the time? Please, pretty please with a cherry on top. I know I'm asking for much. But Ace sounded great. He didn't sing every song. Like, they played Speed and Back to My Baby from his Kiss solo album, which I know that's technically his first solo album. I kind of put that with Kiss because it was still Kiss. Just every member made their own album. So technically, it is his first solo album, but I count that as a Kiss album. That's just me. I know I'm weird. Oh, well. He play, and he sang that on the record, but he didn't sing it live. And he did say, he goes, I don't think I can do a whole set of me singing live. And that's okay. You know, it was great to hear it because I love that track. I love everything on that album, which we'll get to in a minute here. But he sounded great singing, played, played great. One of the greatest guitar players of all time. He's not on that bullshit fucking Rolling Stone list, which we'll cover in a video. But, um... His solo was awesome because he played a lot of Led Zeppelin riffs. It was great to hear that. He played like the Lemon song. Um, what else did he play? I think uh, Bring It On Home, which he did that on Origins Volume 1, which we'll, we'll talk about. So he played like all these Zeppelin riffs, some Jimi Hendrix riffs in his solo. He still has the smoking guitar. That was really cool. He had the light up guitar for New York Groove. So you, all the stuff that you think you're going to see, he is going to do. I just wish that he kind of beefed up the set list. And he only played like an hour 15. It would have been nice if maybe he played 15 minutes longer. Maybe got a couple more songs in there, but I get it. 
Um, he looks good. I know a couple years ago he lost a good amount of weight. He changed up his diet. Not, I mean, he wasn't fat, but um, you know, he lost a good amount of weight and you know looks good. Was moving around okay. His band was I, his band was really good. I think Scott Coogan's back on the drums, who has played with him in the past before. Great drummer. He did some singing as well. He did not introduce the bass player and the guitar player. I think they're from Gene Simmons' solo band, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, it, it was a really good show. Uh, the opening act sucked. I don't give a fuck. They were terrible. They claimed to be a metal band. Um, they were trying to dress up like Motley Crue and all these other groups, and they had, guys, they had dry ice and, and smoke and and makeup and and they sucked i don't give a fuck apparently they've been on the road with ace for like a year and a half um but i was not impressed the singer kept calling everybody um fuck what was it player he was hey player what's up player what fucking year do you think this is guy it's not 2000 anyway and they were like hanging out after the show and they, and they were trying to get people to come talk to him. And it's like, get the fuck out. I'm not here to see you. I'm here to see Ace. Um, yeah, th- I couldn't wait for them to get done because they were terrible. And I will say this. I don't know what it is, but why did the drunk assholes always have to sit next to me? There was these two jerk-offs that were there. And I, I got up and, and went and sat in a different seat. Um, and you know what? There was not a lot of people there. Like, especially I was when the in the orchestra because it's an old theater, and I love this venue. I love going to this venue. It's a nice old theater. That's where I like to go. I don't like to go to stadiums. I don't like to go to arenas. Outdoor amphitheaters are okay because I'm on the lawn. I usually sit on the lawn and I sit away from everybody. Else. I'm okay with that, but I can't do arenas and I can't do stadiums. People may think I'm a pussy, but it's too many fucking people. I, I can't deal with it. I'm sorry. It's just the, the PTSD shit. Um, it's just way too many people. I, I, I can't I can't function. My bad. I know people, oh, you're a pussy. No, I'm not a pussy. You're a pussy. Um, anyway, but I love going to these theaters and these clubs like the Brother King. That's where, and, and they sound, and every band sounds so much better in an environment like that. I don't care what anybody says. They always will sound better in a theater or a club. Get over it. Anyway, but there wasn't... I was sitting in the orchestra. There wasn't a lot of people in the back end where I... In the front, it was full. And I don't know about the balcony. But I was like, really? For Ace? Like, it's not a whole lot of people. Same with Joe Perry. When I saw Joe Perry last year, I was towards the back of the theater. There wasn't a lot of people up there. I'm like, really? It's fucking Joe Perry. Like, come on. I don't know. Anyway, but these two dickheads were drunk. The the one guy, he was drunk before he got there and it was really annoying because he was like, Ace is a bitch, Ace is a bitch. He's not going to come out for 30 more minutes because he didn't sell the place out. He's not going to play a full set. So if you think he's a bitch, why'd you pay for the ticket, guy? And then he kept yelling, lick it up. Ace didn't play on that record. Ace didn't play on that song. I don't know why that's so confusing to people. And then he left Thank God. And then his buddy was still there, and he was drunk. And I got up and and moved in the next row. I got in the back row and sat away because I just couldn't fucking deal with it anymore. Um, Yeah, but they always seemed to find me. I don't know why. But the meet and greet, the meet and greet was, again, I I had a good time. I, I can't complain. Again, I've heard mixed things about Ace over the years. Uh... I made a joke to the girl at the merch table. I said, uh, is he in a good mood tonight? And she kind of chuckled. She goes, he's been in a really good mood the past couple weeks. She goes, I'll let you know if he if he's good. And he was. So it, was, it wasn't, it was like five of us, six of us. It was me. There was a couple behind me. They were after me. They were from the old neighborhood. That was crazy because we started talking about that. There was another guy there that was really cool. There was this this hot fucking MILF that was there, which was really cool, just saying. Uh, there was a guy there with his son, and then there was a guy there with his daughter, and that was it. So they took us backstage. We waited for Ace. Went in, um, and it was fine. You know, it was, uh, the package was you got, 
a autographed set list, which I'll show, a autographed laminate, three autographed pictures. So that was five items autographed, and then you could bring one item. So I brought one of the records for Ace to sign. Um, went in, sat down, and, and just asked. I, uh, I The first thing I said to him, I said, hey, Ace. He goes, hey, how are you? And again, I get it. He's 72 years old. That man has been through hell and back. Drugs, alcohol, kiss. You know, that, that that's... Being in kiss is more than enough, you know. And uh, I said, the first thing that I did, I said I was in the Army. The first thing I did when I graduated boot camp was listen to Origins Volume 1 because that had just come out. And he went, cool. He goes, we did Emerald tonight. I said, yeah. I said, you guys killed it. He goes, wow. He goes, that's kind of cool. I'm like, cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I asked him about Eric Carr. And Ace is deaf, so he's like, who? I said, Eric Carr. He goes, oh, oh. He goes, Eric Carr was a great guy. He was a great guy. And then we all started talking because Ace, I don't, John is the guy's name. John Ostronsky, I think is his name. I, he works for Ace in some capacity. I don't I don't know if he's his manager. Really nice guy. Really cool guy. Walking around, hugging and kissing everybody. Great guy. He hugging me and everything. Really nice dude. And we were all, like, engaged. And there was another guy. I didn't catch his name. Uh, but Ace has good people around him. Thank God. You know, because we know how it goes with these legends sometimes. Um, and so he started signing everything. He goes, yeah, just, he goes, you're good. Just let let them drive for a minute. I'm like, all right, yeah, no problem, Ace. And um, I handed him the record. He goes, and again, as I said with Brother Kane, he goes, would you like me to personalize this? I said, if that's okay, please. He goes, yeah, no problem. He goes, your name? I said, Fabio. He goes, Fabio? He goes, that's kind of like Fabian. He goes, is he still around? And the other people didn't know who Ace was talking. I said, the singer, right? He goes, yeah. He goes, I think he's still around. They're like, who? I'm like, there was a singer. And Ace is like, yeah, yeah, there was a singer back in the day, Fabian. He goes, I remember him. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Um, and I said, would you ever put Hide Your Heart back in the set? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> He goes, you know, Gene called me when I when he found out. He goes, who wrote that? I think I think it was Desmond Child and Paul Stanley. He goes, oh okay. He goes, yeah. Gene called me when when he found that I was going to put that on my album, and he told me to take it off. I said no. He goes, I already spent the money to do the song. I'm not taking it off. You're just going to have to deal with it. I said fuck Gene and Paul. I said the way I said the way they treated you and Peter was bullshit. The way they treated Eric Carr, especially when he was dying, you know, he goes, they're just, he goes, you know, Gene and Paul, they're just, they're angry people. They're just angry people for no reason. I said, yeah. I said, fuck them. I'm out, out of the original Kiss. Ace and Peter were the heart and soul of that band. I met Peter last year. I met Ace last night. I'm good. Fuck Gene and Paul. If I if I never meet Gene and Paul, I don't want to meet Gene and Paul. But if by circumstance it happens, nah, fuck them. I don't care. Ace and Peter were the heart and soul. Whenever people talk about that original lineup, they talk about Ace's guitar. They talk about Peter's drums. So there you go. Peter was Peter Chris was the best singer in, in Kiss. He was arguably him and Eric Carr are kind of neck and neck, at least for me, for drummers because they were phenomenal drummers. They stood well. Peter still is, but yeah, and that was it, and we took a picture, and he stuck his hand out, he goes, Fabio, nice to meet you, I shook his hand, I said, thank you so much for inspiring me to pick up a guitar, he goes, you're welcome, and that was it, so I had a good experience with Ace, yeah, he was tired, yeah, he's deaf, I had to kind of speak up a little bit, but it was worth it, um, the girl that was there with her father, she was, had the makeup and everything. She was like showing me pictures of her collection. I was like, oh, that's awesome. Nice girl. Nice kid. Um, she was complaining to her dad about something. And then her dad said, he goes, I don't know why you're complaining because, you know, one day he's going to be gone and you're going to get mad. I said, yeah. I said, your father's right. I said, one day we're all going to be gone. So you might as well enjoy it while it lasts. And everybody in the room was like, yeah. I'm like, it doesn't really get more more simple than that. So there you go. Um, so I will. I did get a shirt. Uh, there was one shirt that I really did like. It was the makeup and it said Space Ace. But it said 79. 
Should say 78, just saying. But I really like this shirt. This was cool. So had to get that one. And I have another. The, it's the album cover I'm about to show you. I I will never buy T-shirts from from Kiss again because they did us. They did like a huge sale once, and all the shirts that I bought showed up cracked and peeling. And I said, "Fuck that! It's, it's wasted wasted my money." You're better off getting them at Walmart because they'll last longer. So, anyway, here's all the goodies. So, we got a laminate autograph, which is cool. And he asked, he goes, is it okay if I sign everything in blue? I said, that's fine. He goes, oh, okay, just want to make sure. So, yeah, again, I've heard mixed things about Ace over the years. I, as I as I always tell you guys, I base my everything in my life off of personal experience. Ace was really nice. It was really cool to me. Can't complain. Peter, Peter is a fucking sweetheart. I love Peter Chris to death last year when I met him. Can't complain. Whatever people say, they might have pissed them off. They might have pissed in their Cheerios or something. I didn't do that. Everybody I meet, I am nice and I am respectful. I say please. I say thank you, even if they're a dick. Just the worst thing that you can do is be a dick back. So there you go. And then you got three, do that last. You got three uh, like pictures. So I think this is when Space Invader came out, which I love that. I love Space Invader. When that first came out, I really dug it, and I still do. And then I think this is around the same time. Nice little headshot there. And then, of course, we have the classic smoking guitar shot. You can't go wrong with that. Never gets old. And these will all go in the handy-dandy autograph book. And then we have a signed set list. So I'll get that framed up. So, yeah, um, Rip It Out. Fucking love that song. Uh, Rocket Ride, great song. Um, Speeding Back to My Baby was really cool to hear. Parasite. Now, Ace wrote Parasite. He didn't sing on it. Um, when he did Origins Volume 1, which I love again, he re-recorded it and sang it, which was cool. He didn't sing it. Uh, he did sing it um, last night, which was awesome. Rock Soldiers, love that classic song from that first album. Love Gun, my favorite Kiss song. Hard Times was really cool to hear. Detroit Rock City, apart from the solo, eh, if I never hear it again, I'm good. Emerald, which is a Thin Lizzy song. Ace said Thin Lizzy's one of his favorite bands can't go wrong um new york groove can't go wrong with that shock me yes cold gin and then they did the ending of black diamond that little like outro jam that they did which was really cool and then they ended with deuce which one of my favorite kiss songs can't complain um but for me the creme de la creme of course had to get my original pressing of the 78 solo record sign and he did personalize it he asked and I, I said, please, if it's not a problem. He goes, no, no problem. I was like, cool. Um, but yeah, I fucking love this album with all my heart. This was the best of the four solo records. Peter's is right up there. I never get tired of hearing this. I didn't really discover this one until a little bit later. I didn't get into the solo records a little bit later. But ever since I first heard this, just... And yeah, and again, this is the original pressing. I have a, a, a repress, a picture disc actually repress. Um, but this has all the all the goodies. It has all the original goodies. I think the Peter one as well. So you have the original Kiss Army order form. You got the poster, and then you have the original insert with all the members on it. But yes. Um, this is definitely the best of the four solo records. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's still the highest selling of the four solo records. Can't go wrong. Celebrating its 45th anniversary this year. Got to get a at least one spin on wax sometimes. I've been listening to it on my phone nonstop, but can't go wrong. So yeah, um, again, figured do something a little bit different. Get some music. You guys know I'm a huge music fan. I think music, honestly, was my first my first love. I really do think that. Um, 
Just wanted to do some something different, get some concert reviews again. Meet and greets kind of fall into the convention category. So, uh, good stuff. Can't complain. I hope that you guys liked it. And uh, we'll talk to you later. See you.